Hey, if you've been around very long, you remember this past July, I announced that I felt like crypto was starting to put a bottom in and we would start to see that bottom. Well, I'm gonna show you in this video why I feel like that bottom is now getting established for Bitcoin, which means very near in the future, it might be the perfect time to start buying Bitcoin. This is a crypto update for October 6th, 2022. Let's go. Hello, hello, everybody. It is Jeremy Whaley here from Trade Maestro. You can check us out over at trademaestro.com if you've not done so already. Be sure to get over there and sign up for our mailing list so you can get all the updates and stuff straight to your email. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about the crypto markets. We're going to talk about Bitcoin and why I feel like the bottom is getting established here in the crypto market. So come over here to our crypto charts. And what you're looking at here is Bitcoin. See all my lines and all this stuff, uh, that's kind of irrelevant. The most important thing is what you see back here. You see this green area, the red box, and you see that big pink purplish thing line right there. You see that? Yeah. Well, we started drawing that several months back. We started drawing, I guess, back in June here when we put this first bottom in. And then we actually did a trade setup in July which was never confirmed because if you look at this, we never closed above that. We had a couple days where we kind of traded briefly above that, that trigger point. But we never closed above it. We've come back down now and we are really putting in the bottom. You see that? Really putting it in. So I do believe that this is probably going to be it. The uh, precise number is just under 20,000. It's um, about 19,200 or so, just depending on where you draw it. There's a bunch of different kind of fine spots you can put it in there, but just under 20,000. This really does seem to be the bottom that we're putting in here, which means very soon, I do believe we're going to have some good crypto trading opportunities. So uh, I'm going to kind of scale out here and just show you briefly. This is where we've come from. Uh, we are now below the long-term trend line. We're below all of it. We're, we're right back at this main pivot. That pivot point right there, that 19,200 or very close to that, whatever that number is. Um, it was first established in November of 2020 as a resistance line. It has now been touched twice as a solid support level. Let's talk about what could happen from here. So first things first, let me kind of explain what's going on in the market. Whenever you have a bear market, which is what we've got right now for crypto, you're going to basically flush everybody out during this panic selling over here, okay? So this is the panic sell. We've already seen all that. Once you get to the bottom, this is the period of time in the trend that we call an accumulation period, okay? This is what's happening right now, accumulation. And what that is, is it's gonna be more informed investors, more informed traders that are taking their positions. This is a time when the news seems to be the most bearish, okay? Now, notice I said the news. I didn't say the market, which the market is bearish, but, you know, th this is when the news media is telling you it's a bad idea. Have you been paying attention to headlines? Have you seen what some of those news outlets have been saying? Okay. Uh, this is when the uninformed traders are running. They're running away. And they're saying that they don't want to participate in crypto anymore. And how much have you heard that? If you've been listening to people that used to be big, big crypto fans, now they're saying, you know, maybe, maybe the crypto boom has busted and it's done. Maybe we're, maybe we're done with crypto. Well, I don't think that's the case. I think crypto is the future. Uh, I think the Bitcoin is here for a while. And if you look at some of the recent headlines, I should have pulled these up, but you know, Michael Saylor just dumped a ton uh, additional money into Bitcoin, buying up even more. And when you start looking at these big, big position holders, they're not dumping their, their Bitcoin. They're actually loading up, they're adding more to their positions. So what does that match? That matches this model of accumulation. Where informed traders are buying more position, uh, the news is the most bearish, the news media, that is, is the most bearish. The kind of everyday retail traders are running from it. And this is the part where we start to establish 
the bottom. So what you're going to see, I can't tell you how long it's going to take because an accumulation period could be as short as, you know, three or four weeks, or it could be as long as months, several months. So I, we're starting this right now, and I'll show you a couple of models of how this can play out. But what we're doing is we're getting into this accumulation period, and there will come a day. And I don't know if that's going to be the next two weeks or next two months or next six months. I don't know when that day is going to happen, but it's going to break out. And when it breaks out, the first thing it will do is it will come back and it will test that old resistance here as a new support and then eventually begin the trend. When that happens, we call this the public participation phase. Okay, I'll just abbreviate this with public part. Public participation. And this is when the next bull market really runs. And eventually it gets up here to the top and we call that a distribution phase. Okay. So that's irrelevant for now, but that is what we call it. And when we get to the distribution phase, that's when the media is the most bullish. That's when the average everyday retail traders are just dumping everything they got into the trade. And that's when the very people who started the move, the informed traders, are taking their profits. So what you can see here from this market cycle is you can see that the informed traders are the first into the market and they're the first out of the market. And it's the average everyday retail traders that are always on the wrong side of the trade. They're always getting in too late or getting in or getting out too, too early to, well, you get the idea. They get out at the bottom, they get in at the top, and they wonder why the trade's always going against them. What you want to do, if you want to be a profitable trader, what your outcome is, is to learn how to identify this right here. Learn how do we identify when we're moving into that next phase of the trend, when the public participation is picking up. And if you can learn how to get in here and get out somewhere up here as the distribution phase is working uh, or is starting to shape up, you're going to be able to make some serious bank. And this works for every trade. I mean, it's not just crypto. It's not just Bitcoin. This works for every market, okay? So now that I gave you that little bit of a history lesson there and kind of a technical analysis lesson, now that you understand that, let's come back over here and take a look at the chart. And if I zoom in a little bit here, I said zoom in, I meant zoom out. Zoom out just a little bit here. Uh, you're going to see how we are very much starting to establish that accumulation period down here. Now, the question is, where does it go from here? Do we, uh, do we consolidate? That's the technical term for this. Do we consolidate for several weeks or months? Well, I think we've already done that. I mean, we've really been going since June. It's been a very slow movement here. It's not a very fast consolidation, and it's certainly not a very fast accumulation. Um, so, and by the way, I'm using those two terms interchangeably. Uh, all accumulation periods are also a consolidation period because you're consolidating price action. So you'll hear me use those terms interchangeably. But functionally, this is an accumulation. So the question is, will we expand this for a long time or will it break out relatively soon here? And if it breaks out pretty soon, then what should we expect? And the answer is we should expect it to come up, come back down, really test that see if it's going to hold or if it's going to drop back through. And as long as it holds, then you should anticipate the future bulls. And we've got some targets here. we got this kind of first target right here around 30,500 or so. That'll be your first target. And then, you know, we've got targets all the way up ultimately to 65,000 plus. So, yeah, there's a lot of upside for Bitcoin. So what should you do about it? Well, I am not quite ready to do a new trade setup on this yet. I don't feel like we've confirmed it. Uh, I can't really do a better trade setup than what we did back in July. Uh, it's just, we're not there yet. So it would be very premature if we started doing a trade setup on this right now. But it does tell us that there's a lot of opportunity as this accumulation is starting to build for crypto. So let me show you a couple of those opportunities. And if you'll pay attention here on my channel, I'm actually going to put out um, very close within probably a couple hours of this video. I'm going to put out a video on XRP and why that's actually meeting this criteria right here. So let's, uh, let's look at a couple of other trades. I want to flip over and take a look at Ethereum. Now, Ethereum actually did trigger our trade back in August, okay? So if you can see this on here, um, 
you can see we did this trade setup. We finally triggered it or kind of make like around mid August here and it came right back down, tested, didn't want it to, but it did. It came right back down and tested, tried to make a second run and it failed. And boom, here we are back at the support level. Now, while it might feel like you're just getting stopped out of these trades and maybe you're losing on them. The truth is we've got a really, really good setup on Ethereum. Good enough that I'm actually going to reset this trade while you guys watch this here. So we got a trade set up on Ether coming up in the next couple of minutes here. But before I do that, let me kind of show you what's happened. From an accumulation standpoint, there's your accumulation period right there. Now, from a chart pattern standpoint, that's a triple bottom. One, two, three. You got a triple bottom there. It broke out of the triple bottom. Broke out, tested it right there, and then it started a public participation period. Now, it did not have enough gusto to keep moving. So you see it's come back down and it's testing this old support a little bit here. And it has held. It has held now for several weeks, about uh, three to three or four weeks or so, that it's been kind of pounding into that price range. As long as that support holds, Ethereum is putting in the bottom. There's no question about it, as long as that support holds. Moreover, whenever you study point reversals, you'll realize that this is essentially a three-point reversal. A couple ways you can count them, but let's just go with this particular route for counting reversals, one, two, and then the next point would be your third point. So one, there's your higher high. Here's your higher low. You see how this, this low is higher than the previous one? Starting to build that trend line. When it breaks out and it continues, there's your, your confirmation. Now, another way that you could do that, some people count these one, two, three, where you put in the bottom, there's your first higher high, your first higher low, and then the continuation there is your breakout. Either way, it's basically the same pattern. It's just a matter of where you put the numbers. So uh, there's not a right or wrong, wrong way to do that. So um, the point here is Ethereum is much further down the road. Uh, as long as that support, which is coming in right around 1300, as long as that support holds. Now, if it drops down, it'll go on down to about a thousand. But uh, as long as this support holds, this trade is coming on the radar very, very quickly. And I'm going to do so much. I'm going to be so bold as to drop a new entry down here. And I'm going to pull this stop. This will be our new stop. We'll put it down below these recent lows. Now, you have to understand, if you've not seen the way that I teach trading, the way that I do trading, I don't buy just because we're at the bottom. Okay, If you buy just because you're at support, you're setting yourself up to lose a lot of money. Here's what a lot of people don't realize. Before a trade, before it can, um, well, let me say this a little bit differently. If, uh, if, if a trade is going to lose a lot of money, the first thing it's going to do is hit support, slow, slow down at support, and then drop below that. Okay, So what a lot of people do is they try to buy at the bottom, thinking they're bottom fishing, basically, thinking they're picking the bottom, and then they wonder why the bottom keeps falling out from underneath them, because they're buying on the wrong side of the trade. You need to drop, buy in the direction of the trade, drop, buy in the momentum of the move. I learned this from an old Forex trader, and it has served me so, so well. I learned it many, many years ago. And basically, here's what we do. We don't buy when we get to support. We wait until it bounces out of support, and we set what I call a trigger. Okay, this is a trigger, also known as an entry price. And when we get to that price, and the price for this right now is going to be about $15.89. If you want to make it $15.90, that's just fine. Okay, so about $15.89, $15.90, maybe $1,600, wherever you choose to put it in there. But here's the criteria I'm looking for because we got to deal with a trade reversal, right? So we're reversing a trend. Remember, it takes a lot more work to reverse a trend than, than to continue a trend. So we're reversing this trend. I'm looking for a close. A closing price above my trigger, which in this case is 1590. When we get there, then we come behind it and we say, okay, my next target's going to be up here at 2600 and then 33 and on and on. Um, that'll be our next targets on this. And we, when we talk about our stop, we say, okay, if we get down to this price point, which is about 1220, okay, if we get down to about 1220, I'm out. And what we just did there is we just established our risk and our reward for the trade. So the difference in the risk, or the difference in the entry and this stop price, that's going to be your risk. That's how much you're actually putting at risk. It's not the full amount of the trade. It's not the full amount of the capital. If you buy one full Ethereum token for $1,590, uh, that's not how much money you're risking. You're risking 
if you trade it right, you're risking the difference in the entry and the stop price. The stop here is 1220. So whatever the difference is there, 90 minus uh, 20 would be 70 and 15 minus, so it'd be 370 is what you're actually risking. Okay, so there's your risk on this. We'll just denote that with an R, okay? So that's how much we're actually putting at risk if you have a good trading plan and if you actually follow the trading plan. Now, what if we actually get to our targets? Well, if we get to our 2600 target, well, that's our first one there, okay? And if we entered this trade at 1590, and we get out at 2,600, that's $1,000. It's over $1,000 in profit, okay? Would you risk $370 to make 1,000? <laughs> Heck yeah, that's almost a three to one reward to risk ratio. What about if we got all the way up here to 3,300? Okay, well, there's another, uh, what is that? Four, another six, excuse me, another three. So that's uh, 700. That'd be a $1,700 profit. I'm using round numbers here. Okay, and if we got all the way up to the higher numbers, I can't see them because they go off the screen there, but you'd have even more. So what you do here, and what I'm teaching you is I'm teaching the principle of managing your risk and your reward in this trade. So I've shown you the trade setup. I've shown you how I do that and why you buy in the direction of it. If you'll learn to trade this way, then what you're going to find is you'll be a lot more profitable in your trades. A lot of crypto traders in particular, they keep just buying and holding and buying and holding, and they want to hodl. You know, they, they have all these different sayings. We're going to hang on for dear life or, you know, all, all sorts of different things that people in the crypto world say. That's not how you trade. That, that's not how you trade at all. And you can say, well, I'm just a long-term investor. That's lazy investing and it's lazy trading. Good traders know when to get in, they know when to get out, and they know how to protect their risk. And I think maybe if there's a gift of the last several months of the crypto trades and the crypto market, it's the fact that it has um, it's punished people for having that philosophy of buy and hold and just hodl forever and people have experienced the pain. So now, you know, hopefully a lot of these crypto traders will be a little bit warmed up to the idea that, you know, maybe I should learn how to actually trade because there is a ton of money to be made in crypto, but not by buying and hodling like that. Uh, what you need to do is you need to learn how to actually trade the market. So I've just done that trade set up here for Ethereum. And uh, just briefly, I'm going to hit on a couple of others in here. Here's XRP. XRP, look at this accumulation period that was building up here. You see this accumulation period? Boom. Boom right there. I also did this trade setup back in July as well. And this one's actually confirmed. And now it's pulled back and look at that continuation. Mm, that's why I'm gonna do another video on XRP because I got too much to say about that one. And to keep this video short here. Uh, XLM, this is the next one I want to show you. Look at this nice accumulation that's being picked up here or I should say not picked up, but building up here. Very, very good accumulation period. Our stochastics is suggesting we're about ready to break out. Let's see if we can get this breakout for XLM. It's too early, folks. It's not time to get into XLM yet. Please hear me. Well, I mean, if you're doing old school, you know, buy and hodl, but how did that help you? How many people got into XLM back here when it was, you know, 25 cents token and they've lost 50% or more or worse? How many people got in when it was 30 cents or even when it was way back here, 50 cents or more? How many people got in way back here and they've held all the way through this and they're like, will it ever come back? Will it ever come back? That's not how traders approach it. The way we approach it is we look for these accumulation periods and other signals that we look for. We wait for the breakout and then we're going to jump into that public participation when it goes from 10 cents, 11 cents up to back up to 50 cents. That's when you get a five times reward. OK, we're not going to do this whole hopium thing where people say, oh, XLM is the future of this and that. And, you know, you got to buy it and just hold on for dear life. No, we're not doing that. It's lazy investing. And you guys are better than that. So um, I've probably gone through enough here. There's so many different cryptos that you could look at right now. There's so many that are putting a really, really good support in and uh, they're starting that accumulation period. So if you're a crypto trader, you've been waiting for this. In most cases, it's not time yet. XRP is maybe the ex exception here, but in most cases, it's not time yet. But keep your charts updated. I'll keep doing these updates when it's appropriate. As long as we're just kind of sitting here not doing much, uh, it's not really valuable for us to just sit here and keep doing market updates. But uh, as things start to move, I'll, I'll start doing more updates for you. And uh, we'll, we'll keep you updated on what's going on here. Very soon, I think the Bitcoin triggers will be here. I think it'll be time to start setting those trades up. Uh, I've just done it for Ethereum here. I'm going to do another video for XRP. And uh, you guys just, um, 
you know, hang on. we got some exciting stuff coming up. If you are not subscribed to this channel, get yourself subscribed right now. Go ahead and hit that subscription so that you get the notifications whenever I put out new videos, which I do. Uh, sometimes I do in big spurts like I'm doing today. And sometimes they might be a little bit sparse, but I uh, do quite a bit of new content for you. And it's really valuable. And even if you're a crypto trader, uh, the stuff I put out for stocks is very practical. And if you're a stock trader, in the same way, a lot of the stuff that I do for crypto will teach you a lot of stock markets. So I teach, I teach as I do the analysis, and that's the way that we approach it. So hope this has been helpful for you. Hope you've learned a lot. And like I say, get yourself subscribed. If you haven't subscribed, I don't know what you're waiting for. Go ahead, hit the subscribe button right now so you can get my next updates. And until next time, happy trading to all of you. We'll talk to you soon.